Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Sorry we didn't make it on Wednesday, but a couple things ended up happening that made it impossible to stick to our time. So it happens, but it's a good thing anyway. As we do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth of you, seech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Good times. Last night, the concert was spectacular, and photos and things to come. Thank you. All right, let's dig in. What day is it? Oh, right, it's Saturday. It's a just a nice, happy, easy Saturday day. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the house of the Lord, and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah, who enter these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Reform your ways and your deeds, so that I may remain with you in this place. Put not your trust in the deceitful words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Only if you thoroughly reform your ways and your deeds, if each of you deals justly with his neighbor, if you no longer oppress the resident alien, the orphan, and the widow, if you no longer shed innocent blood in this place, or follow strange gods to your own harm, will I remain with you in this place, in the land I gave your fathers long ago and forever. But here you are, putting your trust in deceitful words to your own loss. Are you to steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, go after strange gods that you know not, and yet come to stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, we are safe, we can commit all these abominations again? Has this house which bears my name become in your eyes a den of thieves? I too see what is being done, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest, in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell on the tents of the wicked. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Alleluia, alleluia. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds. 
The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The section of Isaiah, sorry, Jeremiah that we read today is rather famous because it has that really good repetition, the temple of the Lord, this is the temple of the Lord, this is the temple of the Lord, and because of that, therefore you'll be safe. No. The <clears throat> point is a very simple one. Sincerity matters more than merely having the thing to point at and saying like, see, we have God with us. We have the temple. We have these things. But the sincere heart is what actually is the dwelling place of God. The message is an important one, and it comes back over and over and over again. In the last week, as I've been talking to people about the National Eucharistic Congress and our experience there, the way in which I've been talking about it, the way I've been encapsulating it, has been in talking about sincerity, the, the feeling and spirit of sincerity that people had in going, and that is a very refreshing thing. It's always good. The sincerity of the devotion to God matters a lot because there can be all kinds of different opinions and eccentricities and personalities and the subjective part is really important when it comes to devotion to god it is absolutely important because there is a person and this is where they come into it it's not just something that is from afar and imposed the approach may be different in style, in flavor, in taste, whatever. But sincerity matters. Is it real? Is it authentic? That is tremendous. When we hear this parable from the Lord, I think that this is also a way in which we can discuss the weeds and the wheat. After all, the, the weeds, the, the trouble with them is that they look like, you know, it's just another plant, all kinds of plants out there, but you don't really tell, you can't see, honestly, until later and figure it out. that This is not what we're trying to gather up. It is always true. And I think that as just a matter of course, we should also be reflecting on our sincerity personally, on how really devoted we are. Obviously, we want to get some kind of return on it. We're always looking for the ways in which God is operating in our life as if we were passive in it. But the lesson over and over again is that, no, we are really very active in this. And this is a participation. And God with us is doing things in grace because though God gives us grace, we have to receive it. And so the way in which we do matters a lot. And there are a lot of ways in which we try to hide the areas that we want to be impervious to grace. These are our insecurities, of course. And lots of ways in which sincerity is blocked. But real openness, it's kind of like what we talk about in the world today as being vulnerability. Similar not the same, because it's not just about kind of sitting in our wounds, but actually desiring healing. And, and more than that, of just kind of like working through it and going beyond, and that in spite of whatever our weaknesses or doubts may be, we can actually be with the Lord because we trust in him more and more. And that trust is the basis of sincerity. If kind of woundedness is the basis of the kind of everyday sense of vulnerability trust in god is the basis for the sincerity that matters most it's kind of just shifting the focus 
That's really all it is. And from that comes a lot. From that, for example, last week with the National Eucharistic Congress, it was really tremendous to see because it was ultimately leading to a great deal of joy. And not because it was joy with abandon or something, or joy just forgetting about all the rest of things, but joy because God does actually work in our lives. A message that is always real. All right, that's what I wanted to say today. So as we do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention for this month, that the sacrament of the anointing of the sick confer to those who receive it and their loved ones the power of the Lord and become ever more a visible sign of compassion and hope for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, that the love with which they raise their children bears fruit for generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, hungry, infirm, or oppressed, that in their moments of hopelessness, the hope of Christ enters their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that God will look kindly on our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To the intercession of St. Monica, for our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Now, I have to run. I know it's like super early, but got to go. All right. Everyone have a lovely Saturday, and we'll see you again tomorrow on Sunday. God bless you all.